Hello again, I am Jim Bob and welcome back to F1 Manager 22 Challenge Mode, the series where we make things harder for ourselves by adding in a lot of extra rules that we have to stick to. And those rules have been updated and made even more difficult for Season 3. Uh, if you want to see those rules, uh, then do check the video description. They are linked below. You can have a read of those and see what we're up to. And we're coming off the strong, off a strong result uh, from race one. Uh, as you can see, we currently lead the drivers, cha the constructors championship, and we also lead the drivers championship. We got a, a one-two in the last race. Uh, I think we were slightly masked in our actual pace there by the fact that we're able to stay with uh, the cars in front. Uh, I think if we were left to our own devices in clean air, we would not be as quick as uh, as Max and his Red Bull. Uh, so I'm expecting this race to not go quite so comfortably. Uh, we shall see how things go. Uh, but, yeah, not expecting us to do quite so well today. Hopefully we'll still be able to uh, contend for the podium, uh, but I, I think we'll be extremely lucky if we get the win. Uh, evening Marcel, evening Farah, good to see you guys. Uh, we have a rogue email somewhere. Oh, there it is. That's that dealt with. Let's check our uh, performance targets for the Grand Prix. Uh, so, reach Q2 is the incentive. Uh, we're going to try and get both our cars into Q3. Which we should be able to do relatively well. Uh, yeah, we'll go top 8. Uh, fastest laps the incentive uh, for finish position. Uh, I want to try and get two in the top 6 basically get both our cars into the points and uh, we're on streaks already we've got uh, one down so far on the finish streak which is uh, one driver finishing in the top 10 for four races and two drivers qualifying in the top 10 for five races so with all that done let's just have a quick look at our car analysis so our speed isn't uh, amazing, but it's pretty good. Eighth and seventh for speed and acceleration, I'm happy with that. Our cornering is fantastic in standard cornering. Dirty air low speed is a little worse. We are going to have to work on that a little bit. Uh, and we do still desperately need to get our engine cooling down, uh, especially seeing as we're running with uh, engines with probably the worst thermal efficiency in the game, the, uh, the Honda engines. Let's take a look at the rest of the grid because we didn't do this uh, before the Grand Prix itself. We did it at the start of the year, but not once everyone had updated their cars. So let's have a look at Ferrari because they had a really bad race last time out. And, oh yeah, it's not hard to see why. Their speed is middle of the pack. Their cornering is bad. The DRS is pretty okay, but that's not a good Ferrari. They really, really need to up their game uh, to uh, stand any chance of competing this season. Um, McLaren were looking a bit pacey. And it's not hard to see why. Very, very quick. Uh, very good in the corners. DRS is good. Their cooling, especially their brake cooling, leads a lot to be deserved, uh, desired. That's still pretty poor. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Red Bull. So fastest in a straight line, not the best in the corners. You know, uh, I'd say McLaren have a slight edge over Red Bull in the corners. So it's not hard to see why McLaren were so competitive in that first race. Uh, let's check out Mercedes. And oh, look at their speed. It's non-existent. They're 17th. Wow, that's bad. That's really bad. And the cornering isn't up to much snuff either. Uh, okay, Alpine. Uh, let's see, are Williams still rock bottom? Yep, very much so. They've got very good low speed cornering, but everything else is rubbish. Um, Haas, pretty average. Alpha Tauri, very quick in a straight line, but not very quick anywhere else. Alfa Romeo. 
good speed, poor acceleration. Uh, cornering's a bit all over the place. They're terrible in the high speed stuff. That's going to hurt them later in the season if that doesn't improve quick. And then obviously there is us. So yeah, we're in a pretty good shape. I'm, uh, I think it's going to be a three-way battle between us, R McLaren and Red Bull this season. It looks like Ferrari are not anywhere near where they need to be. All right, no points to allocate out going into this next race. Uh, still working on getting our pit crew's front and rear jacks up a bit. Uh, so we'll leave that there and let's head to Jeddah. Formula One is back. Welcome to one of the fastest circuits on the calendar here at Jeddah. The Saudi Arabian Grand Prix is about to kick off and the atmosphere here is electric. The Jeddah Street Circuit has one of the fastest average speeds as well as the most corners of any track on the calendar. Good high speed downforce is going to make life in the fast lane a little easier for drivers here this weekend. At this early stage in the season, there are still plenty of opportunities for things to change. In this sport, there simply are no guarantees. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Formula One. Okay. So, let's... Uh... Wow, we got perfect sunshine what a surprise uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and start getting our car set up uh, we took Freddie out the car last time so let's take Felipe out for Isaac this time uh, we're going to start on the softs uh, car set up let's have a look at the run time first of all so run plan we want to do 18 laps here at Jeddah uh, again we're going to protect the car There we go. Right, setups. So, uh, I'm going to try a 10.5 rear wing on this car. I normally go for an 11, occasionally even an 11.5. Very rare I ever go for a, a 10.5. Uh, roll bar is going to be a 7.3. Uh, a 3.5 on the camber and a 0.1 on the toe. There we go. Uh, let's take a look at Isaac's car. Well, Felipe's car. Uh, oh, this looks a little bit more extreme. Uh, we'll go with an 11 on this one. We'll go 7, 11. We'll go with a 9, 1, a 3.5 and a 0. There we go. So let's try that and uh, see how that shakes out. Ready to check? Ready to check? Okay, it's green now. So now we have a race under our belt, we've got a good idea of what our pace actually is. And I think we're probably a little bit, a couple of tenths slower than the Red Bull at the moment, as things stand. And that's mainly down to straight line speed, I think. I mean, in the corners we have the advantage, uh, at least in clean air. Dirty air, not quite so much. Uh, but that will definitely play to our strengths in some of these early circuits, having the cornering advantage. Because we can just stay close while we work on... Taking a little bit more drag off our uh, off our car. Uh, got a police helicopter outside, I think. It's quite loud. You might hear that come through. Uh, that's a lockup for Freddy. Oh, big lockup there. Uh, 
but yeah, I think uh, we do need to just remove a little bit more drag from the car. Uh, we do still need to uh, improve our engine cooling. Uh, so there's a couple of ways we can do that. We can uh, do new side pods or we can do uh, a new chassis to help improve the cooling uh, in that respect. Uh, they will both boost our engine cooling. We do have limits though. Uh, we've done our one and only major chassis upgrade for the season. So we can still do three minor upgrades for the chassis. Uh, we have our major side pod upgrade still available. And we also have uh, two minor upgrades remaining for the side pods. But we have used up one upgrade on each part uh, one major on the chassis and then the front wing rear wing side pods floor and suspension have all had a minor upgrade uh, we do have a new upgrade available which we'll probably be looking at uh, once we've done this race because i think we'll get a, a new atr period kicking in around then evening anthony uh, so we're at 90 percent on isaac's car Let's go ahead and call him in. 83% uh, for Freddy. So again, we're calling uh, Isaac in early. He doesn't need to be out there uh, for an extended run because he just needs 500 points. And he's already got more than half of that. So we're all about getting his car set up quickly so we can hand it over to uh, Felipe with minimal wear put on the, uh, on the engine. Uh, what do I need to change? I need to change the front wing a little bit. I'm going to go that way. I'm going to go to an 8, an 11, an 8, 2, a 3.05. Sorry, a 3.50. And I think I'll leave that on zero as well. That gives me the minor change I need for the front and rear wings. And changes the cornering just a little bit as well. Keeps our braking where it needs to be. So we'll try that. Let's throw on some... Fresh tyres. And then we get Oscar. Oh, Oscar. Isaac back on track. I don't know why I keep calling him Oscar. Uh, now we can have a look at uh, Freddy's car. Uh, so this is going to need to be an 11 as well. Uh, we'll try the same setup. But I'll go to a zero because that's what it is in the book. Yeah, we'll try that, see how that works. As always, we'll have plenty of time to make minor adjustments where we need to. But you can see what I was predicting at the start of the stream. It is uh, going to be very tight between Rebel and McLaren. Very close on the timing sheets between them. Sites is a little further down he's on hard tires though so that's a pretty good time Leclerc on the mediums is a long way back where is Leclerc is he stuck in traffic he's not even out on track at the moment uh, Verstappen's out on fresh softs Claire's still not coming back out of the garage. And there we go, he's back out. So let's see what kind of time he puts in. Yeah, that's more like it. And that's on soft. So science is still setting very good times on hards. How does it feel? And we got 100% on... Uh, Felipe's car, so uh, Isaac's done a good job there. Let's call him in while we're looking at that Ferrari. Uh, Russell needs to pick his ideas up a little bit as well. He had a very bad race 
last time out. Got eliminated in Q2. Let's see if he can make it through to Q3 this time. And we just need that final bit of feedback now for Freddy. There it is. And it's a 94, so it's a definite improvement. But still a little bit more to find. Go ahead and call him in. There we go. And that's our first session done. Nice and straightforward. Good session. And Ocon's looking a bit pacey again. He's up there too. Right. So, a little bit more work needed here. Need to bring the front wing back a little bit more to a 7.5. Uh, that will give me some minor changes, but not quite enough. So I'm going to bring that in slightly as well. And we'll try that and see what that does. Uh, we're going to go with hard tires for this run. Uh, so we want to have... Let's see, 18. We want to go... Let's go 25 laps. That's about half the race distance. That should be enough. It's a 51 lap race, I think. Uh, we'll go hard tyres on this one, and we're going to go for 36 laps worth of fuel here. Actually, no, let's go 38 laps. There we go. And send them out. Radio check. Radio check. Radio check. So given our uh, little bit of uh, deficit to top end speed, but our strength in the corners, what I might do is what we did in Bahrain, and that's just look after the tyres in the first part of the stint. I suppose it all depends on where we qualify, but we might uh, look after our tyres a bit in the first part of the stint, just so we've got tires to push with around the pit stop window see if we can go for a, an overcut the other alternative is to really push the tires and go for an undercut but and then try and conserve tires once we get track position but that's always a risk this circuit is very hard to defend position because you've got those three drs zones back to back and you can get some good overtaking opportunities down into the final turn and then some great opportunities coming out of the final turn on the start finish straight two very strong overtaking opportunities there uh, and you can even get an overtake going uh, a alongside at the end of the first drs through that quick chicane so we've got uh, it's very hard to hold position when you're running slow on this circuit uh, we are a little off 96 percent Still a little bit more to find. We'll uh, have another crack in the next session, but we'll just let him run in this one. Get his track time in. Two stop is... It's only really the way if you know you're going to get a safety car. And... I don't think we will. One stop is the most effective strategy mediums to hards or hards to mediums quick tires can work but only if you have a pace advantage we don't Okay, 75% uh, acclimatization. That's pretty much where I want it to be. Got the front wing spot on now. So it's just this that we need to change. So let's go back that way. 
and see if that works. Actually, no. We changed the front wing and we did that. We only gained 2%. Let's bring it in that way. How competitive is this car now? Uh, very good in the corners. It's uh, middle of the pack in terms of speed. Well, just slightly better than middle of the pack in terms of straight line speed. Which is important on this circuit. You know, it's a very fast circuit. All right, there we go. Session is over. Red Bull's again looking very fast. Sight up there this time. Uh, Leclerc Copy. behind sights. Still. That is uh, unusual to see. And if the Ferrari's best times are accurate, that, again, we don't know what tyres Red Bull's ran when they set that lap time. So again, it's all kind of speculative, but yeah, Rebel looking strong as they usually are here. So I've made the changes. Uh, we want to go with, I think 22 laps of fuel should be enough. We're going to go medium tires. For Felipe, again, medium tyres. We're going to go 30 laps of fuel. And let's see if we've got the changes right for Freddy's car. Radio check. Radio check. Okay, it's green now. Another thing you've got to com uh, consider as well is it's not just how competitive the car is, but how skilled the drivers are. And our drivers, while they have made improvements, they aren't at the level of a Charles Leclerc, Lewis Hamilton, a Norris, a Verstappen, a Perez, a Sainz. They're just not there. They're getting better with every uh, every season. But uh, they are still the lowest ranked drivers on the grid, I think. seeing who else on the grid is going to be around their level and the answer is what's your thoughts on coming in or doing any more? no one on paper they are the lowest ranked drivers still by several points uh let's see we've got a 91 so i've gone the wrong way okay that is not good let's call freddy in gone backwards a little bit with setup so we do need to go that way Oh, 
God, did someone run wide there? If we had... And Farrow is really going to hate this, but if we had Lewis Hamilton in this car, we'd be dominating. But Freddie and Felipe ain't Lewis. Right, fingers crossed that this is the right change. It still feels weird not seeing Alonso on the grid. <laughs> then he couldn't support me. <laughs> You're really going to hate me when I play uh, F1 23 then. F1 Manager 23. Because <laughs> I'm probably going to do a Mercedes run. Depends just how far off the pace they are in the game. Uh, we do have our first big crash. Oh, we've got a red flag. It's a very big crash. Red flag, red flag, slow down. Let's have a look. Oh, and they've ended the session. Wow. Okay. Uh, we don't even get to see a replay of who crashed. Let's see if we can beat... Oh, there we go. Lewis. <laughs> Lewis was involved, given the state of those tyres. Uh, who else? Uh, Yuki. Yuki was involved as well. Everyone else's tyres look about what you'd expect. So, yeah, I think it was just those two. You're thinking of putting McLaren, uh, Hamilton in your McLaren for one season. He'll cost you about 27, 28 million, if then. And that's assuming that uh, he likes your car. Because in season one, he won't like you till the end of the season. I don't think you've ever seen a practice session ended like that. Uh, it does happen, but not very often. Um, I've seen qualifying end like that, which is always annoying. Uh, but yeah, you can lose a lot of practice like that. It's usually if you're in the final stages of practice, which we were, because um, practice sessions usually there's like a 20-minute restart window, and so they just end the session if there's less than 20 minutes to go. Sometimes it's only 10, but yeah, in that case, it wasn't, wasn't great. And now... We're in a position where we have an untested setup. That's pretty promising, though. So uh, we'll stick with it. I'm liking the look of that. Uh, we've got soft tyres available. Let's qualify. Radio check. Yeah, it's 27 mil plus... Um, a two and a half mil signing bonus. Well, maybe less than that. Maybe a two mil signing bonus, but uh, at absolute minimum, you're gonna. It's gonna cost you, including bonus and wage, at thirty million for a season. And then, if you add up a, a positional bonus on top of that, yeah, you, know, you might be able to get away with that offering in one. So, if you are desperately intent on signing him. Just try and get your hospitality leveled up through the season, uh, your boardroom leveled up. Just try and increase your team attractiveness rating just to make it a little bit easier to sign him. It'll help reduce the uh, the cost of his contract a bit. Right, so the McLaren's looking quick. Ferrari looking a bit more competitive this weekend.
Let's see how competitive we are. Oh, thank God, I was worried I'd gone a little bit too early. Right, who's coming out the pits first? Felipe is. So I'm afraid to stay behind. And this to get us through into Q2. Evening, Mr. Water. You've timed it well for quality. <laughs> so this will give us a good baseline of our performance for this Grand Prix. Clear track ahead. Fresh tyres. A little bit of rubber on the circuit. Freddy actually purple in the middle, thanks to the slipstream. And we're three tenths off. Three and a half, if you take the slipstream out of, out of the equation. Yeah, so we're about where I expected us to be. Let's see if Perez improves it above us. Or Hamilton, for that matter, and improves his time. Ferrari's coming up to the line. They're staying where they are. Bottas looking quick. Russell is in trouble. He's only 11th fastest. Russell might not make it through into Q2, uh, Q3 again. Down to 12th. Okay. Uh, so, scrub tyres. We've got enough pace to get through into Q3. But we're going to go out at the beginning of the session because of the risk of a red flag if someone has a big crash. Ready check. So I think that's uh, Freddy behind again. Yes, it is. The biggest risk of running a driver's nose to tail like this is uh, if you do hit traffic, it can fuck up the lap of both drivers. I think we kind of got away with that. 128.9. I can't remember what we did last time, but if we're only a couple of tenths ahead of Russell, it's probably not a great lap. Uh... Hamilton was coming through the field as well. Let's wait and see what some other guys do. The snapper looks like he's about to start a fast lap. There's a slight hold up with Magnuson, but nothing substantial. Oh, I don't think we've got enough pace to get through. I think we might have to run again. Is do I risk running again on these tyres? New tyres are only worth around 0.3 seconds. Do I want to 
burn up a set of new softs. Yeah, we'll do it. Track position could be important in as, at least being as high up the grid as possible. Stay as close to the leaders as possible. Gives us a little bit more option with our starting tyre choice. If we end up mid-pack in the top 10, then we're going to have to go, I think, mediums. But if we start in the first couple of rows, then we can go hards, I think. Yeah, I'm glad I did send them back out. Vesti is currently out. Uh, Russell is uh, is out. So that's two Grand Prix in a row. Russell has failed to get out of Q2. Bottas only just staying in. We go fifth and sixth, half a second off. That is a little worrying to be that far off. All right, let's do a scrub run at the start of the session. So we have the pace of, over the Ferraris right now, but we are lacking compared to the Red Bulls and the McLarens. And it looks like everybody's lacking a couple of tenths to, to max. We just get out ahead of the McLaren. That was crucial. And that's going to screw up the Snappens lap. Or whichever Rebels behind us. I'm assuming it was for Snappen. It was. Now, Vesti's got the perfect distance here to get a really good slipstream down here and even close the gap up on the run to the line. So, Vesti could gain quite a few tenths over Felipe here. And we'll get a, even get a, a toe for Felipe off the back of Perez there. So, there we go. Uh, Vesti, tenth and a half faster. Oh, Sainz looking quick. Leclerc looking quick. Or is that just us looking slow? Uh, Verstappen's time was fluffed by the McLaren. And I think it was Hamilton. Yeah, because the other McLaren is... Uh, is there. That's Norris.
So the downside is now that Hamilton's lap is going to be compromised by the two Ferraris and uh, a Red Bull and two Aston Martins. Actually, is he on a fast lap? He is, and he's, he's purple in the first sector. Yep, that's the middle sector ruined. You heard the lift. Oh, and the final sector ruined as well. So Hamilton's getting a bad lap. The ready ham cam. <laughs> well, I thought you'd appreciate Hamilton's lap being ruined by uh, by multiple cars there. close it is though in the battle there the, the shootout the top four separated by a tenth of a second and we did ours on scrubs didn't we so we've got another set of tires we might possibly be able to sneak a front row here I don't know if we can quite sneak the pole but we can certainly try and sneak the front row. This is for all the marbles. I don't know when that became such a, a mainstream expression for all the marbles. Considering it's a very niche sport, marbling. <laughs> or at least competitive marbling. If that's even, the, is that the right verb? Marbling? Or adjective? Or noun? I didn't even know the right term. Marbling. Just random thoughts here as we wait for the guys to get to the line. So here we go. To start our flying laps. Magnussen will be the first to complete his lap. Seeing improvements from Sites in the first sector, but not in the middle. Verstappen's improved. Hamilton has not improved in the first sector, but he was purple there, so that's not surprising. It's the middle and final sectors he will improve. Verstappen up in the middle sector as well. There's Hamilton improving in the middle sector. Magnussen does not improve, stays in 7th. Norris does not improve. Sainz does not improve, although he might have improved his time. Perez stays 2nd. Verstappen oh, stays in the lower parts, he's 7th. Hamilton up to 5th. We're so close to the front row. It's no improvement for Freddy. He's too far back to get a slipstream from Felipe. But Felipe is flying at the moment. Can he find enough? Oh, I put too much of a gap between our two drivers. Felipe only goes fifth. And Freddy stays third. He does not improve his time. So we're just off the front row. Rows two and three. 
But Verstappen is behind us. And so is Hamilton. Look how close that top 10 shootout was. The top 8 separated by less than 3 tenths of a second. This season is going to be epic if it stays this competitive. Ferrari seem to be in the mix this time. There's no McLaren, uh, sorry, no Mercedes at the moment. But if they can up their game and make it a five-way fight between us, Mercedes, McLaren, Ferrari and Red Bull, what a season we could have. There we go, confirmation. It's Charles Leclerc who gets pole position from Sergio Perez, then Freddy, uh, thanks to his slipstream run in in the first part of the session. Uh, Lando P4, Norris ahead of Drukovic by just five thousandths of a second. Uh, then Lewis Hamilton is sixth, Sainz is seventh, Verstappen eighth, then Magnussen and Gasly bring out the rest of the top ten. Uh, Bottas, eleventh, is the first of the Mercedes and Russell down in 14th place. Ooh, not looking good for Mercedes. Here we are, folks. We're back for another day of scintillating F1 action. It's race day. There was some astonishing work from Aston Martin during qualifying, and their drivers are now poised to have a very strong race start. This weekend, Red Bull displayed real promise during qualifying. But will they fulfill that potential by the time they reach the checkered flag? And the clouds today look very ominous, which means that teams may have to contend with rain at some point during the race. Well, this is certainly going to be a challenging, but no doubt exciting race here in Jeddah. Okay. Let's have a look at strategy choices. So, there is the argument for a, a two-stop race, which would be soft, medium, soft. Uh, except we don't have two sets of softs available. We could go soft, medium, medium. Uh, although medium, medium, soft would be the better choice. But as you can see, it's slower than a one-stop. And a one-stop that we can make slightly quicker. Oh, excuse me. And this is before you take into account things like slipstream, uh, staying in DRS of faster cars, which we're undoubtedly gonna have to do once we break away from the pack, we will be slower, which is the risk we run. If we drop ourselves out of a train, then we run the risk of being too slow. And uh, if we don't have enough raw pace, we won't really have the performance or the pace. You know, we won't be able to utilize the full performance of the tires to catch back up when we make our second stop. So question is do I go hard to medium or medium to hard and I think I'm gonna go hard to medium I don't know if we get an early safety car then I can switch and go medium medium from that point onwards but if we get a late safety car I suppose we could always pitch onto the softs maybe yeah we'll go we'll go uh, we'll go hard to medium uh, I'm not gonna take any fuel out on this one uh, or am I hmm I'm gonna take one lap out just in case we do get a safety car if not we can do a little bit of fuel saving I think uh, driving options, I don't want to be overly aggressive at the start. I want to try and save the battery for when we need it, uh, but I do want to use it off the line just through those opening couple of corners. Once we clear sector one, 
we'll probably turn the battery straight back off again. Cloudy skies tonight, with the drivers now having taken position on the grid. Aston Martin there. Starting in third place, they're in a really good position for this race. There's the second Aston Martin. With a top ten position on the grid, this race could really go either way for them. Ah, let me get a little bit of uh, ready to go. vocal lubrication. We're now moments away from this, the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. It's lights out, and away we go. So I'm seeing mediums at the front. I think we're the, the first cars on the hards. Yes, we are. I've got Norris. Can I get Perez as well? No, I can't. Okay, so Freddie is going to uh, tuck in. And I think Felipe is going to tuck in as well. Just have a quick uh, scooch up the inside. Oh, not going to work. So again, we'll tuck in. We'll save the battery. Uh, we might need it just to maintain uh, the gap before DRS is activated. So uh, with, with medium tyres running at the front, this actually works out quite well for us because if we can run medium pace on hard tyres, then when we switch onto mediums, we will have a grip advantage, which should translate into a pace advantage. The only downside is that we are going to be uh, separated from those cars but the cars that we really need to hang on to are going to be Hamilton and Verstappen I think and uh, they are oh, actually Hamilton's on mediums as well but Verstappen is on hards so yeah Verstappen is definitely the one we want to be in sync with just need to uh, be patient for these first few laps make sure we can maintain the gap and then we can look at maybe doing a little bit of fuel saving can't afford to let those medium runners sprint away at the front It's another lap until we get our first DRS zone here. And we are just drifting a little bit. You can use energy, use energy, you can use energy. Just close up over the back part of the lap. We'll also defend from Norris, who's looking a little bit uh, aggressive. Hamilton is looking a bit aggressive on Felipe. Let's uh, again close the gap up to Norris. burn up so much battery just coming out of that corner DRS enable there we go we're nice and close and already this top group has broken away uh, 1.8 seconds the gap between Verstappen and Magnussen. So, uh, any chance Mercedes had of uh, hanging on to this group is gone. Uh, Bottas in front of Russell. Ideally, they need to be the other way around. Take advantage of Russell's better tyres. And now the DRS will be active. There it goes.
So Leclerc and Perez having a good old battle. Side by side. Leclerc will retake the position. Can we get through as well? So use energy. Yes, we can just squeak ahead. There we go. Nice. Very nice. have just gained a race position that puts us in a strong position We don't need to overtake Leclerc here. We can just sit behind him. As long as we don't lose a couple of places trying to get past him and failing. That's all we need. We're actually going to make a move for the lead here. And we're going to get it as well. And Perez might get Leclerc. I think Leclerc will out-traction him. Maybe. Yep, Leclerc's going to hold on. There is no way through for Felipe at the moment. He's just not going to be able to squeeze his way through. It's just too congested in front of him. But Vesti's now controlling the pace of the Grand Prix. So this works even better for us because now the medium runners are having to run at hard tyre pace. So even if we only have the lead for a lap or two, the longer we stay in front, the more it hurts the medium runner tyres or the medium tyre runners because they're not able to uh, use their tyres at the pace that they should be able to it won't necessarily mean much on the straights but in the corners it will definitely uh, Definitely slowed them down. It might even give Felipe an opportunity to sneak a move. God, if I can get both my cars up to the front, that would be awesome. Oh, no. Well, no. <laughs> We just lost out big time. Oh god, we lost out big time. Oh, that did not work at all. How did we just lose three places like that? That was awful. And McLaren with a great overtake. Here's the replay. Watch this. We're looking at Lando. Nine. So we lost out there, which was bad enough, but then we just got absolutely pounced on by Norris as well and they clear it. Uh, that could have gone better we just need to charge up okay, couple. it's not the end of the world we're still in the train we're still going to be lapping faster than we would normally Sneak a little bit more battery in the car again. Quick top up after those uh, little blasts earlier. We do need to be wary of Hamilton behind Felipe. Hopefully, uh, Freddie will help help him defend. I think what we might do once the batteries are charged is start fuel saving a little bit. 
ideally we want to be in a, a, a good fuel situation before we stop onto the uh, mediums so we don't have that drama to worry about can uh, Felipe get in front here got loads of energy. no we can't I thought Felipe might be able to jump Freddy There we go, Vesti is now fully charged. This is dangerous. Hamilton trying to sneak a look there. Couldn't quite make it. Right, let's try doing some fuel saving with Freddy. See if we've got the pace to stay with. Some lift and coast will help that. Okay, copy. I'm hoping our cornering speeds will help us out in the first sector and then we can rely on the DRS in the middle sector and, and final sector. Stay in range. Save fuel. Yeah. Ooh, I'm not convinced. Might need to. Stop lift and coast. Do this very selectively. Oh, someone spun. Uh, that is Gasly, I think. No, Vettel. Car in the wall. We can take a look now. Now let's watch this. Oh, is this a safety car period? Or just the yellow? The crash. That's just the yellow, I think. That's going to be a big blow to Yeah, just the yellow. Okay. okay so just lift and coast. Tyware is on a match with uh, Verstappen. The fact that we've got this group of eight cars means it's going to be a bit chaotic at the pits. And it also means that Verstappen could jump everybody. <laughs> if he can get his pit stop timed right. And if we can get our pit stops timed right, we could jump a lot of people as well, theoretically. Um, Actually, no, we can't. Verstappen could jump us. We can't jump anybody because uh, we're going to be pitting after all the cars in front of us. Norris now 
fighting for the lead. Lift and coast will help. Yes, Robbie. And gets it. Can he break clear? That would be uh, that would be bad if he can break away. Five second gap now back to Gasly and Knights. Some good, solid fuel saving in here. Just trying to manage that gap between us and Paris, make sure it doesn't get too big. traction out of that corner is so important if you don't have it it's so easy to get overtaken and now Leclerc swoops into the lead Norris slots in right behind him to stop Perez from getting through ok happy to lift and coast yeah, at this point any one of eight cars can win this Grand Prix. It's very close. No one has enough direct performance to just pull away. Breaking the DRS is very tricky if you're not sprinting if you're just relying on base pace it's quite tricky got to have significant grip advantage which nobody has right now all okay on fuel so you can do what you want for speed uh, we just went purple. Very nice. Okay, so we've seen some guys boxing already. Are they just soft runners? Yes, they are. So the first of the soft runners are coming in, which means Sonoda might dive in as well. There he goes. So are these guys going hards, or are they going mediums? Is that mediums on Ricardo? No, that's hard tyres. It's, it's doable. Their tyres are going to be not great at the end of the Grand Prix. But it is doable. Once again this season, the fastest lap is purely for bragging rights. Uh, no points attached to the fastest lap, with only six cars scoring. So, any one of these cars could get a win. Any one of these eight cars could finish out of the points. That's how tight this is. That's what's going to make this season so interesting as well. If we get four or even five teams really running close like this. That's going to really shake results up. A bad result could be brutal.
for any one individual driver uh, and also the team. All right, so we're, we've saved a kilo of fuel by running a low mix. I want to get that down to maybe 0.6. And then we can stop fuel saving and think about starting to increase our attacks a little bit. Those medium tyres are going to be wearing out a bit soon. Down to 63, 65. 63 behind us. Our tyres aren't wearing quite so quickly as Verstappen's as well because we're running at a slightly softer pace with this uh, lift and coast. Not quite putting as much uh, energy into the tyres in the corners. Under braking. Bestie keeps going very defensive there. Do I tell Felipe to just stay behind? It's a risk. It's getting both to push up a little bit now. Gap is uh, dwindling again. Would like to try and get back into second again, if possible. Get us into a position where we can try and sprint away at the front. Once our tyres are in much better shape. AI is probably going to go to lap 21, 22. Around that kind of window before they make their, their stops. Actually, they might box a little bit earlier than that. They might stop boxing around lap 18. So use energy if you need it. And that little manoeuvre just wasted 10% of the battery. Use energy if you need Let's see if we can uh, get alongside Perez. At the end of sector two, beginning of sector three. Try and get a move done on the run down to the uh, the final corner. He's lining up for a look. And Paris is lining up for a look as well. Can we get into second? Come on, Vesti. Be brave on the brakes. Good launch. Yes! That's it. We just need to charge up. Looks 
like Aston Martin have just gained a race position. Use energy. Okay. And now I think even even with charge looks like we're all over the back of uh, Norris here. Through, at least we were through the first sector anyway. We're in the lead, but did we give up DRS? No, we got the DRS. Excellent. So we're sprinting this lap. Happy to push. Okay. There we go. We got the drive. Doing a good job. That's going to help you. Need to break that one second and keep it broken. Aston Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. Vettel is in. Vettel's the first of the medium tyres to pit. So we might see some pit stops in the next lap or two. From the rest of the grid. Back off. Right, hopefully Vesti's got enough okay. pace. To stay ahead now. Let's try and focus on getting Felipe up. Norris will have to drive defensively, which will help. Might even present us with an opportunity. And there goes Paris. Excellent. So can Felipe pull away? I don't think I can break away enough. No, I can't. Didn't have enough of a distance with that uh, overtake. <laughs> No matter, if I can get an overtake done here, might be able to stretch that gap before the final sector. It's going to be tight. It's going to be very tight. I don't think I'm going to get it. No, Norris is going to close up on the braking. The very least, what I do want to do is try and break away from these guys before Verstappen gets onto the back of me. I'm going to have to sprint for another lap. Can I break it in the first sector? I've got my faster driver in front now. Sainz is out a second behind Perez. Bottas now up to eighth right on the back of Magnussen. I 
but they're 10 seconds off the back of Verstappen. They're not closing up. Norris is still too close. Ah, this leaves me vulnerable at the start of the lap. Yeah, these two are fighting each other and it's just letting everyone else stay within range. Uh. Come on, box, box, box. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Yeah, take it easy. Yeah, probably. So what I want now is for Hamilton to try and hold up Verstappen, which he's doing. We've got a Sector 3 yellow flag. That's a Ferrari. That's uh, Sainz, I think. Uh, Felipe is in second, so let's put him into charge. Sounds like someone's locked up. Let's take a look at the replay. Let's have another look. Science is the focus here. It's a lockup, and that. Yeah, we're going in a little hot and heavy there. So we've had to burn our tires a little bit. We have got a gap to Hamilton, and we should, hopefully be able to maintain or even stretch that gap slightly while simultaneously trying to get a little bit of battery into our cars I really need Hamilton to hold Verstappen up here because he will have the pace to just close us up Hamilton's closing actually that's a little disconcerting there we go Looks like they're side by side, Verstappen's through, and we'll have the DRS as well. That's not ideal. This is good to come on. But he won't have it here. Or did he? No, he didn't. Just. But he's going to have it in a moment. Yeah, he's got it now. All right, so the question now is, do I let Verstappen get ahead of us after we work so hard to get into the lead? Because it's clear we do not have the pace to drive faster than him and then try and run at his pace in a chance to... Uh, lose less ground during this period where we're being undercut by all the medium runners or do we hold him back and I honestly don't know what's the better option I think he's probably going to pick Vesti off pretty comfortably while I'm charging up here It's like a while to charge up as well, alternating our drivers back and forth. Based on which one of them's ahead of the other. Alright, Vesti's staying behind. Oh, and here comes Max. He couldn't get the move done. We're going to try and hold position. But I'm not going to fight too hard if uh, Verstappen does get in front of us. We'll just follow him. Uh, what is the gap to Perez right now? It's 16 and a half seconds. So we are losing ground. And there you see uh, Perez, Norris, Leclerc and Hamilton are all very close together. Sainz is a few seconds back thanks to his lockup. And I think that's taken him out of the hunt for points. So I think the eight car fight has become a seven car fight.
just need to charge up. Okay. Yeah, Vesti's not overtaking. Noisy being overtaken though. Norris goes purple. He is now fastest on track. He's, he's lapping very quick. 1.7 seconds faster than us. But he's caught the back of Magnussen and Bottas. And that's good. That's very good. That should slow down there. Um, advance a little bit, I hope. Just a single car in front would have been an easy pass, but with two cars fighting, it becomes a bit, a bit harder. They will have a significant grip advantage though. And we are lapping three tenths, nearly four tenths faster than Magnuson, who's just been passed by Bottas. So yeah, this works. If we can keep lapping four tenths of a second faster than the guys chasing, this really will mitigate their fresh tyres quite substantially. And then uh, when we go onto our mediums, we should start closing them in pretty quick. Oh, hello. Yellow flag in sector three. It's Magnuson and Norris colliding. Is this going to be a safety car? To Bottas. Closer look. Watch this. We're looking at Lando Norris. Oh yeah, Bottas got taken out as well. And there's the hit, and it's crystal clear who was in the wrong there. Ah, great. So uh, Perez and Leclerc are through. Hamilton is uh, also through and on the back of Leclerc. So that's group of three breaking away. Uh, Magnussen's got a penalty that's going to hurt him on his pit stop Norris has got a broken front wing that's him out of contention for for points uh, Sainz that's uh, one less car to fight but I think he's still out of contention so I think the top six as they are are the six cars that are going to be finishing in the points it's now just a question of what order and does Bottas have damage Yes, Bottas has a broken front wing as well. So his already crappy race is going to get even crappier. Vesti is still not overtaking. But now uh, those medium runners are going to start swooping onto the back of us. Or hard tyre runners, as I should say. Uh, this does mean Norris might go back onto a new set of hards. A uh, new set of mediums, maybe. Uh, he hasn't boxed. He's staying out. Oh, why is he staying out? Do they not have a spare front wing? Or do they just not have tyres that's going to get him through? What are his tyres looking like? His tyres are looking fine. Oh, that could be Norris out. Completely out for the rest of the Grand Prix. That could actually turn him into a mobile speed bump, which would be difficult. I do kind of need to let Vesti get in front of Felipe, but... Every time I give him the opportunity, he just doesn't overtake. One more lap of charging, we'll get him fully up. And of 
course, this might be the lap he actually makes the move. No, nope, he's not going through this lap either. Again, we're holding the staff and back. Hamilton now 12.4 seconds behind and closing quick, very quick. He gets uh, fastest lap. And with a nice DRS overtake on Perez there, actually takes a second out of us on that straight. Oh, that's painful. We're in the window, almost. So we're very, very close to our pit stops. Uh, Verstappen is going to try and undercut us. So the question is, do I undercut him instead? I could really do with a safety car about now. Max, if you want to just throw yourself into a barrier, I'd be absolutely fine with that. Come on, make the move, make the move. There we go. And I'm fine with Verstappen cutting in between us. Hamilton's just got the gap under 10 seconds. Yeah, we are 1.6 seconds slower right now. Take away the DRS overtake, we're probably about two seconds slower. That's substantial. I think we need the Staffan's pace here. We probably should have let him through. Instead of trying to hold him back. He should fly past uh, Vesti on the main straight here. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, there he goes. Swings out. He's going to uh, swoop through. All right. Bring your pace, Max. Because we are bleeding time to the cars behind. I need fully paid to get charged up as close as possible this lap because this is the lap I think that Max might possibly box and I kind of think I should probably box Vesti this lap All right, fully pays through into second. He's got the DRS. He's got another lap to get charged up. Just pit limit, and just reminder on pit limit. Freddie should now be able to undercut Max. We'll be boxing Felipe this lap. Yep. Box 
box. Yeah, got it. Here we go, tyres off. How far behind the fronts are we coming out? Perez is... Yeesh. 12 seconds up the road. Pretty sure Max is boxing this lap. At the very least, we should have uh, every chance of Vesti keeping track position, getting out ahead of Max. If uh, Max does box this lap, then at least we'll stay close to him with uh, Felipe. No, he goes another lap. Excellent. Okay, so he's going to box on the lap that I wanted to originally, but this should theoretically give us an undercut. There go the fronts. Sykes is coming through. There is Vesti. Closing in quickly on the back of Sykes. Yes, everyone has been very quiet. <laughs> there is uh, Felipe. And he just swoops out in right and chops across the nose of Freddy there. It was a little bit rude there, but uh, he got the move done. Going to give Freddy a little squirt of battery just to make sure he doesn't get dropped before the DRS as a result of that. It's a tactical race, this one. Not a lot of action. Not a lot of uh, rapid overtakes or anything like that. This is a very tactical fight. which kind of makes it all the more authentic, I think. All right, we might just sneak DRS off sites here, if we're lucky. I think we're just out of range. Nope, we got it. All right, so we have to get this move done quickly. Max is just 5.7 seconds ahead of his teammate now. There we go, got the move done there. This isn't great for Freddy. Max still not boxing. Oh, is he going for softs? Oh, that would be a scary thought. If he's going to box for softs, he would be so fast coming through the field. Nine and a half seconds to the group in front of us for Felipe. energy use energy you can use energy use energy come on sneak up the uh, inside or around the outside happen to use battery because I can't risk sites getting back in front of me but it does mean it's going to be hard to overtake. This is my best chance with a good exit here. He's not going to get the move done. All right, got to break that DRS to sides.
Norris in 13th still hasn't boxed. So he's going to the end. As he is. Bottas down in last place. Second off Stroll. Perez now just four seconds off Max. Max has got to be going for soft. If he hasn't boxed yet, he's going for soft tyres. Which means he's going to have some work to do. But he's going to be brutally quick. And I do mean brutally quick. Right, Felipe has broken the uh, the back of Sites' charge there. Ah, messed up there. Come on, DRS. Get me through. So use energy if you need it. Here we go. Ah, uh, Verstappen has boxed. Oh, he's gone mediums. He has actually gone medium. Okay, I did not see that coming. That was a very long stint. Uh, he is four seconds back from Sites. Uh, I was hoping the gap would be bigger. <clears throat> I don't know if that... <laughs> that gap is it's definitely smaller than I thought it was going to be. It just shows you the difference in pace between uh, us and Max. Uh, let me have a look, actually. If we go to lap history... And have a look at Max... So you can see we were doing the 134s, 135s when he was behind us, and then 134.7s as soon as he got ahead of us and into clear air. So yeah, we were we were costing him a good three tenths plus a lap. Safe fuel, safe fuel. Yeah, copy. There he is. There's Max in the background. Oh, so, by the time we catch up to the back of uh, Leclerc, Hamilton and Perez, Verstappen's already going to be on us. That is not a comforting thought. I have to break away from sights now and get onto the back of Felipe. I've got to get some battery back into Freddy's car. So let's get some battery back into Felipe's. Just to close that gap between the two. I don't think I've got the raw pace to break away from sights. I'm going to have to burn the tyres, which I didn't want to do. Happy to push. Yeah, probably. Can't let him get the DRS. If he gets the DRS, I'm screwed. That's it, I'm out of battery. Yep, low battery. Yeah, he got the DRS. Damn it. And I'm just not closing in. Get back up. Now I desperately need to get Vesti back into uh, Drogovic's DRS to protect him from sights. He's got no battery out of this corner, so he's going to be vulnerable. Just about holding him back. And Verstappen's getting closer. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> I do not like this. Come on, Freddy. Get onto the back of Felipe. Maybe keeping sight with us isn't necessarily a bad thing. Again, it's a buffer car between us and Max. 
I am losing ground to the front runners. I've got to get that gap down. I can't drive any slower than that. Come on, Freddy. I might just have to cut him loose. I really don't want to do that. I want him to be the the wingman, the rear gunner for Felipe here, but if he can't close that gap, he can't do that job. Ricardo boxes, so Ricardo's going on to a set of soft tires. Alright, he's in range. Finally. We're good to push. Okay. That cost me one and a half seconds to Leclerc. But I'm hoping it'll be worth it in the long run. Oh, he's about to drop out of range again. Car! Come on, Freddy. Don't do this to me. This is your last chance. If you can't close up at the beginning of this lap, it's over. Right, it's over. I can't. I can't run that risk anymore. He'll just have to charge up behind Sites and Verstappen and see if they can close in that. Oh, well, Freddy's grown. <laughs> Freddy's blown it. Uh, oh, tell you what, that's a bit. Of, <laughs> that's a bit of Ferrari there, I think. Oh, he's still going. He's still in the race. Don't quite know how he managed that, but he's still in the race. Let's put him on a set of soft tyres. Uh, let's give him a new front wing. Hopefully the rest of the car isn't completely destroyed. Stay as close to the delta as you can. And we're going to go soft tyres. Let's see the crash. Okay, here's the Ferrari. It took sides out completely. I think Max got away. Yeah, he Max did not get involved in that, but Sites was already out of contention for the points. Now he's out of the race. We were actually kind of dragging Sites back into points contention there. Uh, let's save a little bit of fuel, save battery, save tires. How bad is the damage? Uh, minor chassis damage check engine performance against Felipe's car okay so no component damage that's useful he's driving in clean air oh that might be why he wasn't closing up oh, god damn it knew there was a reason why he wasn't closing up the gap <laughs> what's going on Hamilton's winning that's what's going on <laughs> oh dear uh, so this is actually going to drop us down in terms of track position a couple of places. Um, I'm just hoping that the uh, the switch to soft tyres is going to be beneficial. Um, you know what? I'm going to cancel that pit stop. Oh no, Perez is pitting. I have to. I have to. Please tell me I'm still in with a chance of doing this. If Perez is pitting, I have to uh, go onto the softs. Box, box. Yes. Whew. Yeah, box, box. Uh, 
I'm entering the pit now. Copy. So make sure you get your pit limiter, pit limiter, as you come in the pit lane. Got a big gap to Ricardo, so we'll be able to fight our way back past Gasly. Uh, Felipe should be able to get ahead of Ocon. That's the tyre situation. We're going to have the best tyres on the grid, along with Vettel. Max is now favourite to win this Grand Prix. I'm just trying to make sure that both my guys get as close to, if not on the podium as possible. Uh, let's stop saving fuel. You can stop lifting coast. Okay. Actually, Perez might be uh, Perez might be favourite with those soft tyres. They will be very quick. Nobody is a lap down. So there's going to be no unlapping of cars to worry about. Vesti is going to be a little bit slower now with his chassis damage. Safety, safety car coming car in already. In yeah, oh, is Norris boxed? He's changed his tyres, but he's still got half a front wing missing. He served his penalty, but with a missing front wing, he's not going to be in a position to really challenge anybody high up the grid. We didn't get much battery in Freddy's car, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, we're going to go full attack, though, with Felipe. So there is no overtaking until the control line, and there'll be two laps with no DRS. Copy. No saving required. Yeah, copy. If you need it, I'm here. It's gonna let uh, Freddy charge up for a lap behind Gasly. Let's see if we can put Ocon under enough pressure that he buckles, or we can slip through with that significant grip advantage. Oh, come on, we had the inside line there. Might help if I actually stopped his tyres being on the way. <laughs> <laughs> the low pace setting there. Yeah, Hamilton and Verstappen side by side. It's going to be between the two Red Bulls because they're the ones with the most the most grip. You can see our lack of straight line speed hurting us a little bit there. But we do get the move done. Oh, we're still in the low tyre setting on Felipe as well. No Nicely wonder done. that was so hard to make the overtake. We think we can lean on the tyres more. Okay. 
Right, let's see what you can do, Freddy. Felipe is now just in the points. <laughs> I saw the comment come up and I looked at the leaderboard and immediately saw that Verstappen had got past Hamilton. This is good, come on. DRS enabled. Alright, Leclerc is vulnerable. We are almost fully charged again. Right, Freddy needs to uh, find a way through now. We need to start putting pressure on Charles. The snapper has dropped Hamilton. As expected, the grip difference between those worn hards and those relatively fresh mediums is quite significant. Did Leclerc get the DRS? I don't think he did. He didn't. That's it. Paris should get past very, very soon. Martin with a great play there. They've moved up a place. Vesti is past Gasly. Oh, come on. We had that move there. We're going to get it here, so we've got to go a very aggressive on the battery here. I think we just about got the back of Perez there. This is good. No, we didn't. Didn't get the DRS. Looks like Aston Martin have just gained a race position. We got the position though. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Raw pace and grip there. Once we get past Russell, that's the points for Vesti. Perez definitely being held by Hamilton here. It's allowing Max to sprint away, but it's allowing us to get charged up on the back. Save fuel. Copy. We're about to get Russell here. And we'll get the DRS. And Leclerc is still isolated. He's vulnerable again. This is working out very nicely indeed. We just need to charge up. Okay. Oh, we past Perez. Okay, good job. And now we're going to get boxed in behind Norris, are we? We've got the DRS, we're in a straight drag race with the Red Bull, and even with our battery deployed, we can only just stay side by side. We'll get the acceleration out of this corner, though. And we're through. There we go. Right. Let's hunt down Max. We might still be on for a win. Leclerc somehow survived. Lewis struggling to see through the tears. <laughs> ah, don't throw your bad juju at me. I've only had one crash, I don't want another one.
Was that a lock up on the track? Oh, poor stroll. Oh god, now you got me doing it. Use energy if you need it, use energy. There we go. We are through. Perez got past us. That's okay. Let's use that to get our battery charged up even more. Stay cool, man. You're doing a good job. It's going to be another dramatic yep. closing couple of laps again. I think Hamilton's just going to lose the DRS to uh, the back of Felipe. He is. Which means he's vulnerable to Vesti as soon as Vesti gets onto him. It's just going to be in the end of this lap. I think, maybe. Again, we're lacking in raw pace. Hamilton's quick. He's got the DRS, that's why he just about managed to hang on somehow. Doing a good job, keep pushing. Perez is not closing like I thought he would. Hamilton's still part of this fight. Another lockup. Who was that? That's a safety car. Oh! Sonoda's locked up, I think. Let's go balance, balance. Yeah. Uh, look after the tyres. Look after the tyres. And charge. Oh, it's a big crash. Sonoda, Schumacher. Schumacher's out. Sounds like there's been contact. Here's the replay. Right, watch this. There's Schumacher. Oh, and he got the Williams as well. You really see the contact there. And that caused a lot of damage. Safety car. Safe. All right. Okay, that makes things very interesting. Uh, I kind of wish we were ahead of Perez, but... I'm looking to see if anyone might box. I don't think so. Maybe Bottas. Maybe Magnussen. Can't see anybody else boxing, really. Not with so few laps. We've still got a tyre advantage. I wish I hadn't saved so much fuel at the start of the Grand Prix now. But you can never predict what's going to happen. You can go, oh, well, there's going to be a safety car in this race. So I'm going to take two laps of fuel up. No safety cars. Not even a yellow. <laughs> You've got to spend two thirds of the race saving fuel. But you can go, oh, there's not going to be a safety car in this race. I'm not going to take any fuel out. And then you get four safety cars. You know, and then you just end up with so many laps. Or a restart. A red flag restart and you end up with like three and a half extra laps of fuel. Or three and a half extra kilos of fuel to burn off. Five to go. You can never predict. Magnussen and Bottas have pitted. They were the, th the two that I thought would pit. Uh, Joe obviously is boxing from the damage. Sonoda is going to have to box. To replace that broken front wing, if he can. Yep, there he goes. Gets penalty served. And they should all be coming out on softs. 
Could we see a valiant late charge from Bottas? Brand new softs. Mm, interesting. Uh, I do need to get past uh, Hamilton ASAP at this restart with Vesti. I've got to be very careful with the battery usage as well because I'm not going to have time to recharge. Really, it's going to be use it and it's gone. So I'm going to have to be very selective where I try and apply that uh, extra horsepower. There's a safety guard come, going to come in this lap. We might go another lap. That would be beneficial to Vesti. Give him an extra lap of charge. I think we are getting the extra lap. Sometimes you do get a last second pull in from the pit car, but yeah. There we go. One extra lap. going to be a very tight finish. It's four to go. Three racing yep, laps to go. A dramatic final sprint. No saving required. Yeah, copy. You can stop lift and coast. Yeah, copy. Try and get some of this extra weight off the car, or at the very least stop accumulating quite so much Those extra minutes. weight. There we go, safety car ending. Let's make sure I don't forget to do the tyres. Would I be happy with third and fourth? Yes, I would. I would be happy with third and fourth. Uh, I was not expecting to win this Grand Prix. Uh, I was. I said I'd be happy if I could get onto the podium. And uh, that is looking like where we're going to be. <laughs> After Vesti crashing, it would be a very good result. Yeah, it would be uh, fantastic if we can get uh, Vesti up into fourth. It's not inconceivable. We could even get a 1-2. I mean, I'm not expecting that. I don't think we've really realistically got the ability for that, but anything can happen. If I can get alongside here, I can try and use the battery to out-drag. Aston Martin have just gained a race position. There we go, we're clear of Hamilton. 
we just need to charge up. Okay, okay. I'm burn my tyres ridiculously hard here for these last few laps. Right, that's the lead. Let's just keep doing what you're doing. I've got two that's laps worth of battery. Play there. They've moved up a place. <coughs> so now it's time to empty that that battery. Yep, copy. Two laps to go. Yep, copy. Perez is going to get dropped by Max. Max is just about hanging on to Felipe. Can I get that one second before the end of the lap? I need to get Perez at the end of this lap if I can. Give me a chance of getting onto the back of Max. Broke the one second. Now, can I complete this move and then get onto the back of Max before the DRS? Oh, it's going to be close. That's it. Just do what you can. Can I sneak a one two? I'm melting the tyres here giving it everything this is the final lap we are just outside the one second we're in the DRS range I'm gonna have just enough battery someone locked up I immediately went heart and mouth there hoping it wasn't Felipe it's not he's out of battery but he's got a two second lead we've got the DRS Got to save that for the last acceleration. For the final corner. So use energy if you need it. We need to charge it. I'm not going to get him. Okay, copy. It's going to be close, but I'm not going to get him. Ah. Whew, first and third, I'll take a double podium. I will very happily take a double podium. Ooh, that was hard fought. an incredible outcome for Aston Martin's driver. Aston Martin having an extremely good day at the track. You're completely right and what a day for all the fans of the team as well.
After an intense weekend, the team ends in first place in the constructor standings. And for the next round, Formula One is heading down under. Exciting times ahead in Australia on the shores of the Albert Park Lake. What a result. Freddie stays where he started. Good gains for Felipe, good gains for Max, but I always knew he was going to fight his way through the field. Um, we stole that win. We did not have the pace to win this Grand Prix. If we hadn't had that uh, late safety car, Uh, well, if we had that either safety car, if Freddie hadn't crashed, then we'd have been on for a good points position and maybe sneaking onto the bottom step of the podium um, with that second safety car, allowing us to get fully charged and close back up again. Yeah, without that, we would not have won this race. We would not have got Freddie onto the podium. Um, so we def definitely got a little bit of luck but I will take it uh, if we take a look at the standings uh, first second and third there Felipe Max and Freddy uh, Perez dropping a couple of places down to fourth Hamilton gains a place off the line to go fifth and George a good result for George gaining eight places to steal the last point uh, Ocon a good race gained five places but couldn't uh, quite get a point a bad race for Charles Leclerc Ferrari again having a horrible weekend this time uh, Charles I think maybe just getting caught out a little bit with strategy uh, a, a little bit of bad luck and uh, obviously we took sights out of the race although he did kind of take himself out of points contention with that uh, with that that uh, lock up he had earlier in the race oh, excuse me so yeah six or one half a dozen of the other there we, we took him out of the race but he was already pretty much out of points contention uh ricardo good race for him getting four places bottas well he fought his way back to 11th from last with those brand new softs uh but yeah not a great race for him a terrible race for norris uh that's really hurt him uh to break his front wing and then not have a replacement and just spend almost the entire race just pootling around with half a front wing missing uh, and then you know bad race for magnuson schumacher and sites not finishing at all hmm let's see what that does to the standings so felipe uh is now top in the drivers championship by two points from his teammate max in third stays where he is closes the gap to Freddie a little bit uh, we have a, a two point lead over Freddie and Felipe has a six point lead over Max Perez does climb over Lando with Lando not scoring any points he's on five now uh, Lewis gains two more points that closes him in on his teammates Russell getting a point as well that's it for your point scorers it's going to be a very low scoring points season and we're not going to see many more drivers outside of the ones who've already made it into the points get in there the ferraris are probably the best bet of getting into the points at some point it's just a question of when uh, in the constructors championship aston martin 30 points 15 points clear of red bull that is awesome that is almost uh, a one two clear uh, a one two is worth 16 points we have a, a 15 point lead that's very very nice uh, just two more points for McLaren. Again, they could have scored big here. Um, Mercedes, they do sneak a point, uh, but it's only those four teams that have points. Again, Ferrari didn't get anything. Alpine didn't get anything. Uh, Alpha Tauri and Alpha Romeo both climb a couple of positions based on count back of where they finished uh, in comparison to the Haas and the Williams, but no points for them. Good experience gained for all our drivers. Uh, we get another development point for Isaac. We had an exceptional race for Freddy. Collision notwithstanding. Uh, 15 overtakes, 13 defences, 19 failed overtakes, 8 failed defences. And uh, an exceptional race for Felipe. 13 overtakes, 16 defences, 6 failed overtakes and 4 failed defences. We passed all of our sponsor goals, which is good because we didn't have any money apparently. So we now have money. That's good.
Oh, no, wait. I was looking at the wrong thing. So we do have money. We've got 22 mil. Ooh, that's quite nice. Can we do anything with that 22 mil? Uh, we're already upgrading the factory. Design center upgrade is still going through. We've done our one upgrade for the facility already this season, haven't we? I don't know, actually. Did we? Yeah, we did the car park test center, didn't we? At the beginning of the season. So we can't upgrade anything in the car development facilities again this year. Uh, but we can still do the design center and the factory. Uh, we do not need to do anything in here. Although the race sim is getting close to needing an upgrade or a refurb. Let's take a look at our facilities here. Everything's maxed out. The helipad does need a refurb. Let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, must have forgotten all about that. Uh, Staff-wise, we have a new point for Matt Harmon. Let's see. Uh, let's take a look, actually. Where on the car are we lacking the most? Uh, we've got a new underfloor and a new front wing coming. Uh, so... Yeah, chassis is really bad. Even with that improvement of a, a full big upgrade, our chassis is still wor worst on the grid. Uh, the front wing that's coming is already good. Uh, the rear wing is really good. Uh, the side pods, middle airflow needs to be improved significantly. Uh, the underfloor is very really really good uh suspension is awful okay so <clears throat> we need to work on uh, a new suspension when does the next atr period kick in has it already kicked in yes it has okay Do I want to throw a lot of hours on a suspension project this early in the season? Let's see what it would do. This will be my one and only major suspension upgrade. Again, we want to reduce drag. Uh, we want to improve brake cooling. Uh, kind of really need to improve everything. Look how bad our suspension is compared to the rest of the grid. It's actually going to hurt our brake cooling. So we're going to have to dial back the downforce generation. We need to focus more on the, on the low speed than we do on the medium and the high speed. So I can take a little bit more high speed downforce off. We do that as a slight improvement. I think that's the best we can go. It's going to be a nice improvement on our drag reduction. Uh, it won't be a massive boost to brake cooling. It'll just be a very insignificant improvement, but it will still be a minor improvement. Uh, a nice improvement to our airflow at the front, which is not great. I mean, I could really strip that airflow back that would improve our brake cooling a bit more significantly i might do that make our car really really soft in, in that airflow means I could pair that back a touch there and then still pair that back a touch there and that would give me an even better boost to speed low speed and airflow uh, not airflow sorry brake cooling I 
I don't really want to sacrifice our air cooling that much. Our airflow is already bad. I don't want to make it too bad. We'll go with that. That's a, a, a slight improvement. It's a nice upgrade on the brakes. Uh, it's going to give us a little boost to our medium speed performance. It's going to give us a nice significant boost to our, high, our low speed cornering, which we desperately need to improve in the dirty air. Uh, and it does reduce the drag quite nicely as well. It is a little hard to tell exactly where we are, given that we do still have upgrades coming. Uh, let me just, actually, before we go ahead and confirm this, let me back out and see how long we've got until the next upgrades drop. Uh, 24 and 25 days. So they're going to drop for Imola. I think we'll wait till after Imola. We'll still be in the window. Uh, if we, oops, stop, 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 thank you. Uh, <laughs> we'll still be in the window. There is our underfloor. There is our uh, front wing for the Imola Grand Prix and the ATR period will end uh, the end of the following week. So we'll still have time once we get these upgrades built and then see where the car is at that point to then throw in a major upgrade project with some hours and then a week later week and a half later we can then do another major upgrade and try and combine those into a big upgrade package for mid-season um yeah so we'll hang off on any more upgrades for now we'll get through the next two races and then we'll look at doing our next round of upgrades i think um Unless maybe, let's see. I've already used up one of my minor suspensions, haven't I? Yes, I have. I could do a minor chassis upgrade while we're waiting. Uh, how quickly could I knock out a minor chassis? If I just boosted everything. That again would give us a nice boost in the medium speed, sorry, the low speed cornering in dirty air, high, uh, low speed in normal cornering, uh, top speed and acceleration would get a nice little boost. Our engine cooling would get a boost. Uh, we're limited to four engineers. I've only got three available anyway. And we can only go normal, we can't rush. 33 days. That's too long, I think. It's 23 days to Imola. We'd get it in time for Miami, but I wouldn't get it in time for the next ATR window, I don't think. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. Let's get the, uh, the pen to mark this in the book. Uh, we need to improve the chassis. Engine cooling is still bad. This will help boost our speed, which we need to. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Let's uh, let's go ahead and drop that on. So that will leave us with how many engineers do we have right now? Is it twelve engineers? Five, eight, ten. That's only ten engineers. Do I not have any more available yet? Oh no, I've got to get the next upgrade on first, haven't I, before I can extend my engineering team. Okay. So I'll have eight engineers. So yeah, we're limited to... Oh, it's five we're limited to, not four. Uh, so that will... Yeah, that'll work out as four apiece for each of the next two upgrades that we're going to work on, or a five and a three, which I might go anyway. So I've only got two chassis upgrades and they're both minor remaining for the rest of the season oh, i didn't do the point oh what an idiot all right okay uh, well i know i need to upgrade the suspension with a major upgrade so we will stick it on the suspension um alessandro is gonna have a point before imola that's good how long till matt gets his next point uh, yeah a while 
Uh, Engineer will have a new point before the Grand Prix. Uh, ben will not. Scouting team's maxed. Our scouting will come back for Imola. Let's go ahead and allocate this point for Isaac. Um, just clear the emails and we'll advance time to Australia so we can go straight into it when we get started. Oh, yes, I do need to make some new spare parts. I've just started a new chassis project, so I'm going to hold off and see if we can get through the next Grand Prix or two without another chassis upgrade. I mean, if we have to emergency manufacture, then we have to emergency manufacture, but we'll hold off if we can. Just so we're not making parts that we're never going to use. I'm glad you've enjoyed the stream, guys. It's uh, It's been a fun one. Like I said, it's been a very tactical battle uh, tonight. Everything in here is looking good. Oh, that's about to break. That's fine. Not too worried about that. And there we go. We have reached the start of the Australian Grand Prix, which will be where we're picking up tomorrow. Uh, that is our breakdown of performance at the end of the month. Uh, let's have a quick check in with the boards. They are delighted with the results. Disappointed with Austin, the race where both our drivers decided that it would be fun to have an early bath and an ice cream. And uh, yeah, that was not a fun one. But uh, <laughs> led to some interesting uh some interesting spectating as we sat and watched the remaining 30 something laps of the Grand Prix. Uh, they're satisfied with our objectives. We need to finish fourth or above this season. So it has, in, you know, upped that target because it was what seventh, I think at the beginning of the season, that's improved to fourth. Uh, we are on target for that long-term objective score podiums in 25% of this season's races. So that's six races. We've already got two of that. Uh, those races done double podiums in the first two grand prix caesar sitting very nicely at the top of both championships uh, ahead of red bull in the drivers and ahead of each other in the uh, in the drivers championship so yeah there we go uh, a good stream a very difficult race uh, it's going to be another difficult race at albert park again our cornering will help us but our speed and our drivers will be uh, put under scrutiny. Uh, Australia is one of those circuits where if you don't have the best performance, you can be found out very quickly. It does look as though we're going to have fine weather. Uh, so we don't have, have wet weather to contend with. That's good because that would just undo us uh, while our drivers do not have the best adaptability. And it's going to be a while before we can even think about working on their adaptability scores. So until tomorrow night, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob, and I'll be back with some more F1 Manager very soon.